All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Missy and I work at Certified Languages International. So today we are talking with Jorge Ungo. He is the language access advocate at CCHI and Certified Languages and CCHI have been working together for many years on advancing language access. So we're really excited to talk with Jorge today. Jorge, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. Thank you so much. So um, I've been working in language services for uh, about two decades now. Um, most people know me from uh, my previous stint in language access um, as an account rep um, for some of the top uh, language companies uh, in the United States. Um, but I, I took a little bit of a break uh, in the last couple of years and am now working for CCHI. Um, as you mentioned, as, as a language access advocate, um, which is a, a role that, um, first of all, I never dreamed of, um, but second of all, uh, a, a role that I really, really enjoy because I have the opportunity to impact language access in a much uh, in a much more meaningful way, uh, working with with CCHI. Um, part of my role is uh, kind of a liaison between CCHI and other organizations, um, partnerships that we have with other organizations, um, advocacy initiatives. Uh, so, it, you know, it really, it, it's an opportunity for me to give back to the language services uh, world. Uh, and to all of the interpreters out there, both ones that are certified by CCHI and ones that are not yet certified by CCHI. Um, so we we put together webinars, um, all kinds of initiatives just to, to, you know, continue to give back to the community. The webinars you all put together are really great, and I encourage everyone to watch them. I've learned a lot. So great job on those. Thank you. Uh, can you... Thanks. Can you tell us a little bit more about CCHI and what the organization does and stands for and all that good stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So CCHI was founded in 2009. Um, so quick math, uh, we are celebrating our 15th <laughs> anniversary this year. Um, but CCHI, you know, at the core of it is the, the national certifying body for healthcare interpreters. Um, so we have um, put a lot of effort in developing and administering and maintaining um, certification exams for healthcare interpreters uh, since 2009. That's that's kind of the, the, the bread and butter, if you will, of what we do. Um, but in addition to that, because of the the community that we serve, right? It's not just the healthcare interpreters, but it's also the people who employ healthcare interpreters and the people who healthcare interpreters work with. Um, we've really tried to uh, establish additional programs and, and efforts out there to support those groups. So we talked a little bit about webinars, for example, mm -hmm. um, supporting you know interpreters and users of interpreter services with education. Um, we also uh, will host huddles for uh, language access leaders. So people who work for healthcare organizations and are in a leadership role, whether it's a manager or a director or a supervisor, um, we give them a forum where they can get together with their peers to discuss some of the challenges that they may be facing. And we um, recently, uh, in January, started a huddle for uh, healthcare interpreter trainers, giving oh, them wonderful. a forum. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they have a forum now where they can um, discuss amongst their peers some of the challenges um, that they may be seeing um, as trainers. So, you know, it's more than just administering the tests and maintaining the tests. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big part of our job. We have dedicated staff that work on that. But my role uh, is kind of the all the the extra stuff that we're we're doing at CCHI and keeping that going. Oh, um I feel like you're the you're kind of the expert at bringing people together in that way, bringing people that. together. <laughs> yeah, you're just bringing people together. That's cool. Yeah. I love um, it. I did not know about the huddles myself. Those sound so 
useful for those groups of people because I think sometimes it seems like to me sometimes you can kind of feel like an island of one or two as like an eight language access coordinator or something at a big hospital it's kind of an uphill battle yeah so to bring people together who know that struggle and to just bounce ideas off each other and learn and grow sounds so cool yeah I mean one thing that I've learned over the years working with people in those leadership roles Mm -hmm. is that, you know, you, you kind of, you, you can get stuck in your little world Mm -hmm. because there's so much going on, right? Mm -hmm. Just within one single health system, you know, you look at their calendars and they're just like back to back on meetings, you know, with, you know, you name it, you name whatever the initiative that's going on within the hospital and language services needs to be at the table. Yeah. Um, and so there, there's a lot of opportunities for kind of that internal organizational discussion, but where is the opportunity for them to to talk to their peers outside of those organizations? And to like, I'm based in Houston, Texas. Houston is the site of the Texas Medical Center, which is the largest medical center in the world. We have over 45 institutions in, I think, a two or three mile radius um, within this or- within this, this uh, business district here in Houston. What has been fascinating to me over the years is that language services leaders um, don't always have that opportunity to communicate with each other, even in a like mm-hmm. super con- condensed or uh, yeah area like that. So the huddle um, is that opportunity that we give them. Yeah. It's an hour and a half. We'll have like a guest speaker for about twenty minutes um, that'll talk on on a topic specific to them, uh, and then we'll do breakout rooms. We'll have large group discussion. Um, it's a great way for them to meet each other you know you'll have somebody from kansas and somebody from california that have never met each other before and then they come to this virtual huddle and you see them in the chat exchanging contact information with each other um and so yeah it's it's just such a cool thing and we you know we intentionally made it we wanted it to be a safe space for Mm -hmm. language services leaders um so while it's not like a membership organization um we we have made it somewhat of a closed group, just mm-hmm. in the sense that we want to make sure that they feel comfortable speaking to their peers openly about their challenges. Um, so anyone who wants to join can go to our website. There's a Google form that they can fill out. And then once we evaluate their profile and we know, you know, that they're that they mm-hmm. fit the demographic for the group, then we add them to the list and then they get the, the quarterly invites. So, um, you know, it's just, it, we, we just wanted to foster an environment that would be comfortable for them to speak openly. I've always wanted one of those for LSPs, just the people in the trenches, just to talk about the different language access policies that are out there, just to understand them all. And so it's like, hey, what what do you know about it? What do you know about it? Just so, because I think if we all had an understanding of the policies, then it just helps everyone, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, that is such a great idea. I love that. I love that. We, You never know what, what, what huddle we might come up with Jorge, next. So thank you for do that. Do it. <laughs> and I'll be there just like taking notes because some of my favorite um, webinars or things to join are when um, Ma- Mara from... yeah. Mara, she does just like breakdowns. She'll she's done a few of like fifteen fifty seven, and it's so helpful. And it's like, can we just all just discuss the policies, or like what they mean, and just like, you know, ask each other questions because some of that stuff is kind of complicated. So yeah, anyway. absolutely, no. Mara's Mara's incredible at that. She's one of our commissioners. Um, but yeah, she he is. is top you know, notch. yeah, she is amazing. Absolutely, unbelievable. Um, okay, thank you. So what are some of the your favorite initiatives that you're working on this year? You kind of went into some of the huddles and stuff, but is there anything yeah. else that you're working on that you want to share? Yeah. Um, well, I'm, your 15th anniversary yeah. uh, is, is really, really super exciting. I mean, I remember being at uh, the Upper Midwest Interpreter and Translators Association Conference 
15, 16 years ago when certification discussions were taking place uh, and all of these experts were behind closed doors, you know, discussing the potential of certification and to see how far we've come uh, now uh, and, and, and kind of where we're at 15 years later is really, really exciting. So we've got, um, you know, we've got our second National Healthcare Interpreter Certification Summit coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, that's just been a joy to to, to put together and to work on with my colleagues at CCHI. Um, we've got 30 something presenters uh, coming. We've got nine concurrent workshop sessions happening. Uh, some, some really cool outside the box plenary sessions. We're gonna have some thought leadership round tables that are gonna be really, really great to attend. Um, so it's just been, you know, great putting really fun working with Natalia and the rest of the staff at CCHI putting that event together. And we won't stop there. That That's happening in <laughs> April, but, you know, we, we like to celebrate our, our, our anniversary year round. Um, so we'll have some other stuff coming coming up uh, after the, the summit uh, to continue to commemorate 15 years of National Healthcare Interpreter Certification. It's wild. It's only been 15 years. It seems like it's been there forever. I don't know. And that's a yeah. good thing. That's so great. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So CCHI re recently launched a new English to English or E to E exam for interpreters. Um, can you give us a very general overview of this exam? Let me start by kind of giving you a, a very brief overview of what our testing in general Perfect. currently yeah. looks like, Perfect. right? So if you are a Spanish, Arabic, or Mandarin interpreter, um, first you take our core CHI written exam, uh, and that tests you on knowledge of code of ethics, uh, some vocabulary, things like that, but it's completely in English, uh, completely multiple choice, and administered on a computer. If you pass that exam and you interpret Spanish, Mandarin, or Arabic, then you go on to take the oral performance exam, which is a bilingual exam that uh, tests you on your ability to interpret accurately. Um, so if you interpret a language other than Spanish, Mandarin, or Arabic, then previously the only opportunity that you had to become certified was to just take that first exam, the core CHI, mm -hmm. the written um, knowledge exam, and that was the end. That, that, was, that was it. You stopped there. There was no test to validate your performance as an interpreter in all of the hundreds of other languages that are out there. So at CCHI, we just, we didn't feel that that was a fair and equitable way to administer a national certification program. We wanted to make sure that if you were a, a Punjabi interpreter or a Dinka interpreter, mm -hmm. that you also had the ability to get fully certified the same way that a Spanish interpreter would. And it, and it wasn't just for the interpreters, it's also for the healthcare providers mm -hmm. and for the LEP patients, mm -hmm. you know, when they're working with a certified interpreter, I think that they would want to know that that person has been fully validated at the same level that a Spanish or a Mandarin interpreter has, right? It, it shouldn't make a difference that they interpret a different language. So we set out to study whether or not a exam administered only in English, not a bilingual exam, right? Just in English. Is there a way for us to use one language to validate someone's interpreting skills? And that's why it's called the English to English exam, because you're essentially interpreting from English into English instead of English into Spanish or Spanish into English, you're essentially interpreting from English into English in order for us to validate some of those cognitive interpreting mm -hmm. skills. Uh, and so that's what the English to English exam is. The way that we conducted that study was by developing an exam mm -hmm. with subject matter experts and then 
during the study, we actually had Spanish, Mandarin, and Arabic interpreters take both the, the regular uh, oral performance exam for their language, but in addition to that, they also took the pilot exam for mm. the E to E, and then we compared their results on both of those exams. And what we found was that statistically speaking, those exams were on par with one another. In other words, if someone took the Spanish English exam and they took the E to E exam, their, their performance on both of those exams was on par with, with each other. And that validated that that exam then was a valid measure of measuring someone's interpreting skills, even though they're not speaking in the other language. Mm. Were so, people surprised by those results? I don't, I don't think so. I think that the 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 work that we did with the task force of subject matter experts and and the and the time and thought that went into um, how we would do this, I think that our expectation was that that the result would be what it was. Um, there's a whole nother component to it, which is you know that we now need to validate language proficiency. Um, and our test doesn't do that, right? Because the test is just testing those skills, but it's not testing your proficiency in the other language. And so that was another layer that we had to incorporate into our process to ensure that you as a Khmer speaker, um, while you may perform really well on an English to English exam, do you have the linguistic acumen to actually interpret in that language, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have a different process that we have implemented to, um, for them to validate their language skills. Um, but altogether, right, that validation of their language skills plus their performance on the English to English exam presents a really neat package, a really nice package that is on par with testing someone in, in both languages. Um, and so, you know, we feel that this is, it, it, there's no other organization out there, not even, you know, in other verticals of interpreting that are, are doing anything like this. So we think it's pretty ground shattering. Um, I think so too. It's pretty exciting. Very exciting. And, and to see the number of interpreters that are taking the exam and are now um, fully validated. You know, we had we had a um, an interpreter of a of an indigenous language from uh, Latin America who recently posted something on LinkedIn. Basically, she said, "For the first time ever, I actually have validation of my." my language and my interpreting skills like the confidence that that gives somebody I think is, is just so huge and the pride yeah. absolutely absolutely it's, so there's so much validation there too and I just yeah it's so hard to probably you understand this more than anyone just because of your um, past experience as an account rep and whatnot but people just think every interpreter is certified. They're like, can I get a certified interpreter? And it's like, no, in, yeah, like Kumer. And it's like, no, <laughs> that's not really how it works, you know? So yeah, um, it is a game changer, you know? Huge, huge. Um, And this all didn't happen overnight. I mean, I remember um, hearing stuff about it, I think pre-pandemic, um, like the study started and stuff. So this has been over years, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so the 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 initial task force meeting started in prior to 2018 i believe yeah um i think we started working on the pilot exam in 2019 mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean this has been the the we published the first study i believe in 2020 so yeah mm -hmm. this has been mm -hmm. a long road the the actual exam didn't was launched in 2023 um so we are we're right at uh, a little over the one year mark of administering the exam uh, and certifying folks. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been quite a process. It was not an overnight thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's just such a big deal. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm so proud of you all. 
Um, so what's the benefit for interpreters to take the ETE exam? So I would say the benefit is being able to confidently say to someone, I've been validated for my skills by an accredited national certification body. Uh, you know, there, there are so many interpreters out there that are working freelance that um, are, are, are working for multiple companies. And, you know, while the LS, the language service providers may have their ways of vetting and, and things like that. Um, oftentimes the interpreter doesn't have something, you know, a certificate of their own that they can kind of say like, well, this is, this is what I did. This is the steps that I took to go out there and have my skills validated. Um, and, you know, just the, the ability to, to put letters behind your name, right. Um, and, and, and to have that sense of accomplishment, I think is, is so huge. Um, a lot of healthcare organizations are now going towards only hiring certified interpreters. Um, and so there's a benefit there in that, you know, your your job opportunities will open up. Mm -hmm. I've talked to several, uh, several certified interpreters um, who have said to me, you know, I, I was uh, hired without question by a language service company because they saw my certification there, you know, there was no further need, you know, for them to validate my skills. That was enough. Um, and so just the ability for them to expand their reach and, uh, the, you know, their career opportunities, um, uh, because they're certified, you know, and again, you know, it goes back to, Previously, there was only this full certification mm -hmm. available for those three languages. And while you could get certified mm -hmm. after taking that written exam, um, previously, now, now uh, uh, an interpreter for one of the other languages has that um, ability to get fully certified, which is just, it's huge, right? It puts them on par with the Spanish interpreters. Um, so I think that's a big benefit. Are interpreters not in those, what was it, four languages with the original? Spanish? Three. Three. Okay. Spanish, Arabic, and Mandarin, yeah. Are interpreters, are they excited to take it? Are they excited at the possibility of um, getting certified that they can now have like that full certification? Have you yeah, yeah. noticed so that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the testing window happens four times a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd say that our pioneer testing window was probably one of the busiest ones, like the first Great. group. Um, and just to see some of the the, the names of people that um, I know and, and respect so much, people who already have like a following on social media and who are already rock stars in yeah. language services and that they that even at their level that they said, you know what, this is important. And I want to get course CHIP. I want to get the course CHIP credential, um, even at their level. So definitely I, I, is the excitement. I, you know, I think with any testing, there's also apprehension, right? Folks are scared of the unknown. Um, this is a new concept um, that, you know, there's not something that they can compare uh mm -hmm. the experience with and so um one of the things that we've done is we have a practice practice exam on our website that they can take um so that they can kind of get a feel for what the test will be like um to kind of take away a little bit of that test anxiety um mm -hmm. but i think you know that aside um it's just such a wonderful opportunity for interpreters of languages other than spanish arabic and yep. mandarin you yeah. know to get certified Okay, our last question, I feel like you've gone over, but well, I'm going to ask you just in case you have something in the back of your brain that you want to say about it. But uh, so in what ways has this expanded the number of languages available for testing? Yeah, I mean, plain and simple, we went from 
being able to administer an oral performance exam in three languages to now we can administer an oral performance exam in unlimited languages, um, in, including American Sign Language. We have several core CHIP um, certificates uh, that are American Sign Language interpreters, even though they have their RID certification or they may have their BEI certification, there isn't currently any certification for sign language interpreters in healthcare specifically. Yeah. The, the RID certification is a generalist certification. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously, no, you know, that's all. that's what's what 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 is the standard um in in their profession. Um, but to be able to say that in addition to being RID certified, they are also a core CHIP. Wow. It's huge. Okay. I, and I was just at a conference not too long ago and uh you know, we, we had a, a booth set up and, you know, people are coming by to get their signatures on their, you know, little booklet. And I'd ask them, what language do you interpret? And I got several ASL interpreters and, and it was like, they, they almost started to walk away when I said, well, hang on, hang on, let me talk, talk to you about this. And then when I told them about the test and how the test worked and, you know, what, what the test meant that they could get a healthcare designation, uh, a credential that's specific to healthcare and that it can be administered um, in English, that they can take it and actually obtain that certification. It was like they made a U-turn and came back. Wait, <laughs> let's talk about this some more. I, I want to learn more about this. So, so yeah, it's 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 opened up so much, uh, so much opportunity for so many interpreters. You know, we're 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 just incredibly excited to see the the list of languages as each testing window comes and goes, mm -hmm. and then we see the languages of interpreters that we have now certified. Um, it's it's just, it's phenomenal, it's it's exciting. Do you know the number of languages off the top of your head? I don't, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I know, I that don't. was a little yeah. curveball for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that, would have, that one would have required some study. Yeah, uh, but I bet. It definitely, I mean, it's, I you know, if I had to guess, I'd probably guess, I don't, probably 25 or 30. Excellent. Maybe even yeah, maybe even more yeah. than that. Um, because I, I I see different languages every time. You know, we we have a, a new cohort, so really exciting. Yay! Well, that's all we have for you, Jorge. Thanks so much again for talking with us. And um, when is the CCHI summit again? The in Houston, it's April fifth. April 6th. April so 6th. we will, okay. yeah, I mean, April 5th is important too, because yes, it is. we love a party. And on April 5th, we will have our quinceanera reception the night before, because we are celebrating 15 years. So yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a party. It's going to be so much fun. I'm just so excited to see everybody. And we are so grateful um, to have had the support of CLI from the very beginning. I, I, I really cannot overstate how much CLI's support of CCHI has meant to the organization. I would say that half of what we've done wouldn't have even been possible if it wasn't for um, the support of CLI and, and other organizations as well. But I would say yeah. that Tristan has always been there for mm -hmm. us, has always found a way to support any initiative that we've had. Um, and it's just, it's, it's incredible. So they will, awesome. you all will be there sponsoring the event. Uh, I'm so going to be popping out from the curtain, from yes. behind a curtain, <laughs> just <laughs> sneaking totally. in there. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be well, great. It's going to be great to see Kevin and Kristen. And, yeah, uh, yeah, Kevin's always a dude. Yeah. yeah, a party. Well, from what I've heard, um, it was just without question that CLI would support a great organization like CCHI. It was just like a no-brainer from what I've heard. So 